Welcome to Norse Code, the number one podcast for your Minnesota Vikings. I'm your host and producer. My name is James Fogoshnik. Thank you guys so much for listening. And there's no one else on the other end of the tin can and string this week because it's time for our annual Patreon preview episode. Finally, it's April 1st. This is the time of year where we take clips from the last couple of bonus episodes and put them into an episode for you guys to check out. And if you enjoy it, great. Consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash Norse code. For $3.50 a month, you get access to bonus material, you get access to Discord, all of that, and a couple of fun things we do throughout the year. So, patreon.com slash norsecode. Word of warning, there's some cursing about to happen here on the show. Happens a lot when we're doing pre-show stuff. I joked last year, but Arif has a bit of a potty mouth. So, if that's okay, great, continue to listen. If not, consider listening to something else. Maybe Locked On Vikings with host Luke Braun. I feel like Arif would be cool with me saying that. Anyway, point of the story is that uh, there's a bunch of cursing about to happen. So if that's a problem, we understand you don't need to listen to this. But again, if you enjoy what you hear, patreon.com slash Norse code. Subscribing to Patreon really is the best way to support Norse code. It puts us in a situation where we don't have to sit and do ad reads every 15 to 20 minutes about products we don't believe in that you don't want to hear about. And while I'm sure a reef could do an amazing better help ad, we're trying to avoid that this year. So... The best way to support us is patreon.com slash norsecode. And a special thank you to all of the people who have supported us in the past and continue to do so. Thank you. We're able to do live shows because of you. We're able to pay our bills every month because of you. We are also able to replace equipment or computers when they break. Stuff like that. Thank you. It really, truly is appreciated. So, we're going to start the show here. And just a reminder that there is cursing, so prepare yourself for that. But thank you so much, and welcome to our April Patreon preview episode. Going to Las Vegas and need a place to stay? What about a space to film a cutting-edge online show for your website? Perhaps you need a surprisingly nice boardroom with very new furnishings. Look no further than the Paradise Inn and Breakfast. Located just east of the Fremont Street Experience, this place has everything. Great lighting, comfortable couches, an almost off-putting amount of sex toys, and so much more. Need a pick-me-up in the morning? Try our continental breakfast featuring the never-ending cocaine bar conveniently by the pool. Need to work out? No problem. We have an array of exciting workout options on site, including a riding saddle and a stripper pole. Our staff are available on location to the point where it's actually unsettling. Get the bad taste of the strip hotels out of your mouth with our complimentary mouthwash station. Ask about our spacious backdoor accommodations. The Paradise Inn and Breakfast, where memories are made. Malcolm Biggles asks uh, a question we're not going to answer because it turned out not to be real, right? Right. Right. All right. Well, let's delete it. Told you to delete it. And yet I you thought did. you were going to do that. I told you to do it. You do that sometimes. Yeah, but you were like, you're like the guy who deletes stuff. It's just, That's some know, wonderful people. deflection. That's some wonderful deflection there. Thanks, Luke. All right. <laughs> Once my computer gets back on track. Come on, guy. Better than this. This is only a hundred tabs open. This is child's play. I was shocked to see the the the, the small number of tabs you had going in your uh, during the live show. I was I was so proud of my tab management these past uh, two weeks, and then I got COVID, so it, it just kind of yeah got away from me. <laughs> Which is excusable, but also very funny that, like, fatigue literally does that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, nope, just gonna keep it. Yeah. So, what was that? Was that tab open for? Oh, I opened that five weeks ago to research uh, whether or not a guy named Croix Box was a millionaire that the show Dallas was shot on his ranch. And also he's secretly one of the better receivers in Detroit lions history. What the fuck? So yeah, there's that the cloise box set of tabs, right? Yeah. That just remains open during COVID. It turns out normal. Yeah. You don't think about closing that one. No. Uh, Someone pointed out to me, by the way. So, cause I was, I was like cloise box. What a stupid name. That's so funny. Someone pointed out that this guy 
is indirectly responsible for like a good chunk of the discussions we're having right now about Supreme Court corruption. And when he pointed that out, I was down a fucking rabbit hole. I was like, oh, my God, this goes so deep. Uh, And it does. And it's stupid. This guy caught some of the best deep touchdowns in Detroit Lions history. Um, That's his side job, I guess. He strikes it rich uh, for, you know, wildcatting oil or whatever in Texas. Uh, Ends up merging with a real estate company. That real estate company is owned by um, Tameric Crow or whatever the fuck this guy's name is. That guy is Harlan Crow's dad. I don't know if you recognize the name Harlan Crow, but he's the guy that gave all the fucking vacations. Yeah, it's a, it's a, Thurman, it's a Thurman Thomas. Good fucking Ooh, Christ, Wow, James. racist. Holy shit. Look, Clarence how Thomas. is that racist? <laughs> it's because they're both black Supreme Court justices. <laughs> Thurman Thomas is a black Supreme Court Oh, I was justice? thinking of Thurgood Marshall. No! Yeah, you were, t- you were talking about the all-American running back. Yes. That's Oklahoma exactly State and Buffalo Bills. Doing. Yeah. <laughs> what the This is great. We're <laughs> fucking killing it. This is the perfect environment for a live show, I think, when we got all of our I's dotted and our T's crossed like this. Oh, yeah. yeah we're, yeah. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you about the, uh, the dissension uh not the, the the dissension let me tell you about all of the opinions thurman thomas wrote in defiance <laughs> of this court and its biased ways yeah thurman thomas uh fuck overshadowed by barry sanders who replaced him at oklahoma state and oj simpson <laughs> He's, he's like this fucking all world running back, and it's just, you know, two of the greatest fucking backs of all time. Plus, also one of them is a murderer. Like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? That's some crazy luck. Did he make the Hall of Fame? I'm, I'm checking. Yeah, that's actually a good ass question. 2007. Good, good for him, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, for his, for his work with, with the law, yeah, that's important. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> are you tired of your meals being a total sausage fest today our sponsor is butcher box the cost-effective way to get your grass-fed meat straight to your door do you prefer to have your meat frozen in bulk with things you have absolutely no desire to cook what about bags that are somehow not vacuum sealed with a little bit of an off taste for about 150 bucks a month we'll shame you into not eating enough protein try today at butcherbox.com slash dusty is alive that's butcherbox.com slash dusty is alive I, I don't – okay, so for, first of all, <laughs> I was at a wedding. I, just, I, I did not go to a furry convention. This is just an invention of James. He just said it in the Discord for no reason, actually. I can't even <laughs> conceive of a reason that he came up with that. He just said it, that I was at a furry convention in, in, in Alabama. I wasn't. I was in Alabama for a friend's wedding. Um, I mean, so. what's what's more believable that you, Arif Hassan, went to a to, went to Alabama for a wedding, or that you went That's there for believe- a furry convention in Alabama? You went to That's a furry not be- remotely believable. Why would they even hold them in Alabama? I, they have them. I have Googled and, <laughs> after I said it. I, I, I clearly it. am unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah, but you act like this around anime, but have a specific, like, odd knowledge about them, so. I don't know anything about anime. <laughs> yeah, and yet here we are. All right, let's knock this out and go back to disappointing our families in three, two, one. $700 million deal or something like that? Um, but, like, the or 20-year deal? Maybe a 20-year deal. And the last 10 years are, are when he gets $680 million to the $70 million, $700 million, which means the first 10 years of the deal, he's getting paid $20 million, like $2 million a year, something along those lines. I may not have the specifics correct. Do you want to get the speaking, specifics right? I, do, do you have them in front of you? Tell me. <laughs> I, I can't imagine in spirit that I'm wrong, though. Well, let's, 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 let's put a marker here, 2310. <laughs> I, I this may be the first time I've ever stopped you to be like let's let's my get... whole bit is that I don't know other sports yeah I know but this is way off okay seven hundred million dollars that's correct six hundred eighty million dollars not paid while he's playing that's it, all correct 
Yeah, but the way you got there was... Yeah, I took a journey. <laughs> we all we all have to go through twists and turns in life. Yeah, but... Is it 720? Is it 700 million over 20 years? Am I uh, right? It's 680 million deferred. Right. I know I got that part right. Yes. He's going to earn $2 million a year in salary for the first 10 years, I believe. <gasps> so I am right. Oh, fuck you. Uh, you eventually got it. It just... I, 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 I logic my way into the right answer with no evidence in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that you can, rules. You can be super proud of this, or happy that I stopped it so <laughs> for a moment for you to be somewhat hilariously like less right now that you have the correct information. This rules. This is all going in the Patreon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. This is going in Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm good. We got the details correct. Okay. All right. Come back when you... <laughs> no. Loki, the best part about that whole thing uh, was about Stephen Hawking and midgets. What? Okay, I missed this. Oh, I'm sorry. You... Okay. Why am I always the one who has to... Okay, hold on. Hey, I, I am currently fighting for my life out here on pedo accusations, man. I'm distracted, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so, I'm I'm looking for. All right. Oh, it's fake. That's too bad. God damn it! It was it was um, proven to be fake. It said, "Did Jeffrey ever talk to you about Stephen Hawking's proclivities?" Yes, he liked watching undressed midgets solve complex equations on a too high up chalkboard. <laughs> God damn it, dude! How did you not know that was fake? What the fuck? <laughs> I, I didn't actually read the community note. I just read it and went, that's very funny. I don't care if that's real. That's hysterical. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's, so I like... what's not funny about undressed <laughs> <Yeah>. midgets <laughs> solving complex equations? I just like your disappointment when you learned it was fake is just like, uh, come on. Man. I, mean, I, wanted, I wanted to live in a world where that was true. <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's wrong with believing? I, um, <laughs> revolutions have been have been made successfully on less. And they do have, we not believe and, in whimsy? And they have do we the, not believe? And they have fantasy. the math to prove it. <laughs> Before we dive into today's episode, let's talk about something that's on all of our minds: finding the right mortgage for your dream home. And that's where our sponsor, Dream Home Mortgages, comes in. Are you tired of the endless paperwork, confusing terms, and countless trips to the bank just to secure a mortgage? What about the dangers of the city? Do you wish you could have that man cave that is the envy of your friends? And what about that thing that truly makes a house a home? A nice, safe garage? Well, Dream Home Mortgages is here to change that. With their innovative online platform, you can say goodbye to the hassle and hello to the convenience. Simply visit dreamhomemortgages.com and fill out a quick application. Their team of experts will then analyze your financial situation and connect you with a personalized mortgage solution tailored to your needs. Plus, with competitive rates and fixable terms, Dream Home Mortgages makes it easier than ever to finance your dream home without breaking the bank. So why wait? Head over to dreamhomemortgages.com today and take the first step towards owning the garage you've always wanted. Don't let your dreams be stolen off the street twice from you. Let Dream Home Mortgages turn your dreams into reality. Oh, that's Elijah Surratt. That's like that's like a good player. Mm -hmm. I recognize that name. Shit. I'm like a real JMU fan. <laughs> Almost. You do have the alumni right. gear to prove it, but. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, actually, can we pause for a second? Yeah. I've got like a thing where my, to like a little bit of my tooth like br broke off. And um, this didn't happen like while we were talking. I recent. swear to God, if it did, I was going to. No. Justice! Ah, but it's like really sharp. And so like my tongue is swelling <laughs> because it keeps poking my tongue. So I'm going to take a painkiller real quick. <laughs> what in the actual fuck? 
it sucks. Like, there's like so much <laughs> saliva. It's oh, it's fucking awful. What do you <laughs> look, man? <laughs> it's hard out here for a pimp. I get it. I I do. I I <laughs> I understand. At some point, you're just going to like pour wax onto your tooth to make like a fake crown and then start talking and like, Oh, well, this is fine until halfway through. It's like, Oh no, my body melted the wax. <sighs> you know, <laughs> for fuck's sake. No, you have taken my advice once today and it worked. Do not take it twice. It does not work like that. <laughs> my advice works once a day. If uh, I mean, of all the inconveniences I've had, over the past week, I w- this ranks pretty low, but it's very annoying. The cops are going to come and steal your teeth. God damn it. Well, hopefully I can get a... What you, like a write-off? I, like, how would you... Declare my teeth totaled. I'd like a payoff. <laughs> well, actually, you can't do that. You just have to be mouthy. Um, <laughs> they, can, they can absolutely arrange that. <laughs> For the Norse Code cultural uh, cultural respect corner, having oh, recently returned from follow-up. Hawaii uh, with a newfound respect for their culture, I'm appalled by James' refusal to say uh, Fairburn's uh, first name uh, in parentheses <laughs> for potentially racist reasons? Question <laughs> mark. Given I like, I like the energy of the question. Demonstrated talent for getting names right. Will he say? his name uh, or will he be complicit in Norse code's blatant disrespect of no, 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 no. culture? The, how, how this works is I, James. I, as, as a way to prevent James from getting out of saying the name, I can't say the name, right? I have to encourage James to say the name. Um, this is uh, my anti-racism. This is how I engage. This is in your anti-racist activism. <laughs> yes, my Ra- anti-racism is my anti-drug. I about said racism is my anti-drug, and that would have gone a whole different direction. <laughs> that um, that doesn't work for anybody. No. Why for potentially racist reasons? Like, why is that the first place you go? Uh, because you're not uh, demonstrating respect for Kaimi Fairburn's name. I mean, if he anything, chose. If anything, I'm showing more respect because I don't want to disrespect his name. That's that's no one buys that, James. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, not even I, gonna try. A guy got elected on less. All right, like <laughs> give me a break. I don't. I don't know that our elected officials are are the bar to clear when it comes to racism or anti-racism. I would imagine actually moving in the opposite direction might even be better. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this doesn't work for me because week 18, I was just going to break it out without telling anybody for no good reason. And <sighs> just like... <laughs> Have you been practicing? No, I'm, I'm pl- I was waiting until Christmas break for that. <laughs> I like but the I was... idea that you're like, all right, five minutes every day, I'll knock this out of the park. So you just oh, spend yeah, absolutely. like Duolingo. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm a PA announcer. Like I sit and like I'll, I get some fucked up names from from my from high school. And yet, students. this is the name you refuse to pronounce. Look, Interesting, curious. I, I don't I know how to tell you this, but this is so much worse than Schmidt or Johnson up here. Like this one. Worse, uh, huh? Well, interesting <laughs> adjective to use. As worse. far as level curious. of difficulty, as far as level of difficulty is concerned, this is a little bit harder. So. I just uh, want difficulty to is out. just a product of what you've been a culture to. That just means you're not trying. That is not how any of this works. No. <laughs> listen, listen, McDermott. I'm not a team player here. All right. <laughs> hey, man. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. I have been. I, re- I remember uh, this small band of people. Plucky. They had some, some even who would describe them as plucky. Right. They had no training operating heavy machinery. Um, and uh, they, they did had for several months. And- uh, well, I did. The story starts before the okay. several. The, gotcha. Yeah. Um, no one believed in them. Uh, they had little to no funding except uh, the, I guess their patron was rich. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, little to no funding. 
a very little ability to communicate with each other. One would argue that they were in uh, individualized teams, uh, cells even, operating independently. Um, and kind of a vague idea of what their goal was. And yet, they accomplished what they needed to as a result of their persistence, teamwork, pluckiness, uh, and the lack of security standards surrounding flight training. A lot of the latter actually seemed to matter, it turned out. Yeah, well, I mean, lessons, right? Everybody's learning lessons. Yeah. My name is James Pagoshnik, and I'd like to talk about something exciting. The thrill of winning big at Chumpa Casino, our proud sponsor. If you're looking for the ultimate casino experience, look no further than Chumpa Casino. With a wide selection of frustrating slots, table games, and more, there's always something new and exciting to play. What sets Chumba apart? Well, for starters, you can play for real cash prizes from the comfort of your own home. Their hilariously somehow barely legal sweepstakes model means you can legally play from almost anywhere in the U.S. Just follow our simple rules that we change monthly, seemingly on a whim, to make it insanely difficult for you to follow. And by no fault of your own, you'll be banned before you even get a chance to wonder how you can withdraw your winnings. And the best part? Signing up and verifying is quick and easy. Just head over to ChumbaCasino.com, create your account, and start spinning those reels. Average processing time for sweepstakes entries is three months, so just try to ignore that each code you need to mail in is only good for 30 days. With no purchase necessary to play, the fun never has to stop. So why wait? Join the thousands of players who have already discovered they've been banned by Chumba Casino and are actively trying to file a class action lawsuit. And who knows? You could be the next big winner in court. That's ChumbaCasino.com. I am finally watching the video of the Pop-Tart mascot of the Pop-Tart yes! the toaster. Yeah. I've like been retweeting all the memes, but I haven't actually watched the video. <laughs> and I This is a Rick and, this is a Rick and Morty episode. Like that that's it what really this is. is. And you, it's like you are watching interdimensional cable right now as they are feasting on the on the fucking Pop-Tart that demands to be eaten. And and it like it, it's very clear that like that's like obviously the inside is like whatever, but it's very clear that it is coated in actual pop tart. Yes. Like that's the crazy what the fuck is wrong with Man, they know that bowl games gotta be weird and they fucking nailed it. Like this is Duke's Mail <laughs> Bowl is, type shit. Yeah, that that's that's absolutely it. Yeah, like the Outback Bowl that dressed people up as like Bloomin' Onions and Coconut Shrimp or whatever. Exactly. This is exactly what you have to do for insane college bowl games. Um, dousing -tart bowl, dousing people in mayo? Sure. Yeah. I you, think this You'll year, end up on Pornhub, but like, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's... It's a base. It's like a one hundred percent, like uh, not long enough time span. You'll end up on Pornhub anyway, right? Yeah, so you fair. might as well, yeah, on your own terms. <laughs> well, we'll end up on OnlyFans at some point. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, if instead of Patreon, sorry, <laughs> instead of Patreon, <laughs> and it's just the episodes, right? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, you're gonna have to explain some things to your significant others when we make this change. However. But that's when we announce our partnership with privacy.com that allows you to create an online digital only credit card uh, that it has a unique number and will show up uh, on your statement as just a that credit card bill. So privacy.com. It's a drop shipper for credit cards. Well, no, it's it's digital only. So you don't actually receive a physical. Well, yeah, card. that's it's just the it's. The VPN it's more like, for a credit uh, card, yeah. It's more like um, a crypto tornado for credit cards. Um, <laughs> That's not a thing, Arif. That is not. Wait, are you unfamiliar? I do not I know to, like, what a crypto. I had to write is. to the IRS about this. I'm um, a god, god damn it! It's actually a really simple concept. This okay. is related to the kiwi farms thing. I. <laughs> it was important that I did it. Okay. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just. It's okay. So sometimes the things that I do don't register to me until I say them out loud. So along those lines, Arif. This man is an international criminal. I have no doubt. Uh, along those lines, I got a question in that we cannot add on the show. 
but it's important to be uh, for it to be asked. I, ca- I cannot answer any questions about my relationship with Chelsea Manning. That is... We're going to put a pin in that one. <laughs> so actually, so um, Luke submitted a piece where, okay, the, the central premise of the piece is that his two rabbits are debating each other. Whatever. Um, <laughs> he, he may have had too much eggnog. Fine. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I get to insult him uh, several times throughout the piece through the use hmm. of editor's notes. Um, so I'll allow it. But at one point, one of the rabbits says, I hate this sentence. One of the rabbits says, all refs are bad. And my editor's note is, the implied acronym here makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> so the fact that that occurred at the same time that question comes in. That's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that either. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, editor's note. The implied acronym makes me very uncomfortable. Oh, uh, that's that's terrible. So I'm just gonna take the top 100 pl- or 200. Yeah, the top 200 players. Um, throw that into Excel. This is fun. Um, it would have been easy if I was told to do some research before the episode, but that is oh asking. fuck off. We're we're not <laughs> even in the part that's gonna be on the show. Don't even <laughs> pretend. Do not pander to these people. These people. I control whether or not these people hear this part. <laughs> you control the horizontal. You control the vertical. I have the. Uh, I have the mandate of heaven. <laughs> while we're while we're at it, what's your mic at? <sighs> Fifty nine. That's like closer than most normal yeah I, I feel like it just enters some sort of like a randomizer it you must or i wonder nope that's not it or you're just unlucky and all the terrible things are going to happen to you i'd fail to see any evidence of that i look i'm just saying that it's possible possible that uh, this is something that you may need to deal with now, this time of year, a salt protection spell is probably the best idea. It's not even Oh, a spell. fuck off. It's oh, just, my God. It's just a circle Jesus of salt. Christ. You can oh, go, my you God. You can go kosher. You can go with the with the woman with the umbrella uh, on it, the little, like, little, like, cylinder container. You can do that. Morton's? Yes, Morton's. Do you think, um, you think that the... Uh... The eternal spirits are fine with iodized salt. Yes, I don't think they discriminate. I don't think they're going to need the uh, the ten dollar bag bag, mind you, uh, f- <laughs> uh, from like Whole Foods or something. I, just, I feel like they've got like some level of purity and quality that they demand. I mean, you would know more about this topic than I would, but I, this, is, uh, this is intuition. I know nothing about this topic. I James. don't. I want to make that perfectly this is clear. Going to be a situation where they're going to discriminate. They may. They may actually just be okay with like a circle of those Himalayan like sea salt like rocks. I, I'm not going to do it because first of all, someone's going to have to fucking clean that up. Yeah, that's not worth it. No, by itself. Well, I mean, before we continue our show, let me introduce you to something truly enchanting. The Sarah Rose Cosmetics Mount Rose American Teen Princess Pageant. Are you ready to witness the grace, talent, and beauty of Mount Rose's brightest young stars? Then mark your calendars for the most glamorous event of the year, brought to you by Sarah Rose Cosmetics. Picture it, a dazzling stage adorned with shimmering lights and vibrant colors. Amazing talents on display. And don't forget those dance numbers. Contestants will be showcasing their poise and charisma in hopes of becoming the next Mount Rose Teen Princess. Sarah Rose Cosmetics is proud to be an official sponsor of this prestigious pageant. With their luxurious makeup and skincare products, every contestant will shine like a true princess on the gurney. I mean spotlight. Under the spotlight. The pageant is also sponsored by St. Paul Pork Products. It's still the same family-run business that Walter and Vera Pilarski started back in 1920 when they raised and slaughtered their very first pig. But the Mount Rose American Teen Princess pageant is more than just a beauty competition. It's a celebration of confidence, individuality, and inner beauty. And of course, America. It's about empowering young women to embrace their uniqueness and chase their dreams. Join us for an unforgettable evening of glamour, talent, and inspiration for these drop-dead gorgeous ladies. Tickets are on sale now at the Legion, but they're going fast. Don't miss your chance to be a part of history at the Sarah Rose Cosmetics Mount Rose American Teen Princess pageant. 
Visit mountrosepageant.com for more information and to reserve your seats today. Go Muskies! There is a request for your uh, power ranking of enemies. Yeah, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> the, the power rank I didn't even put a power ranking the list in the discord is good enough as it stands yeah. which uh, drop play Dave is correct to be annoyed that he's not on it but <laughs> I'm not going to modify the list to put him back in I'm not adjusting my uh, list of enemies just to make you feel better <laughs> yeah an <in> enemy <laughs> <laughs> You guys should do this podcast and tribute to that game. Two hours and 55 minutes of absolute silence. And one of you blurts, well, that fucking sucked. (laughs) I actually have a good response to that. (laughs) Oh, that's good. I was about to say, like, I don't think we could even do that in, like, a road trip. (laughs) (laughs) One of us would have to say something. You're right. We'd be like, hey, why does that ghost have a pointy hat? Like, you know, just like one of us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're driving to green bay <laughs> one of us just goes oh look another quick trip that's that'd be it yeah that's yeah that's it yeah fucking ai um i'll just give up on it okay so this is what they said. The greatest number of starting quarterbacks that an NFL team has fielded during a season is seven. The record was achieved by the 1987 strike replacement team for the Washington football team. Tell me more. Chat GPT. Uh, certainly. Great. Uh, you said certainly, and then you didn't actually tell me. Fuck you. Waiting. Waiting. Still waiting. They updated the prompt to say still waiting? That feels disrespectful. Unable to reach Poe? Okay. The 1987 NFL season was unique due to player strike, etc. Ed Robert, Tony Robinson, Ed Luther, Steve Pallure, Babe Laufenberg, Jay Schrader, and replacement player Tony Adams. All right. Wiki, 1987, Washington, Arslers. Maybe it's not listed in profile by reference because they don't count the games. <gasps> Did they turn out to be right? Okay, well, they had seven quarterbacks. Did they field seven? They're so confident. Who the fuck is Tony Adams? Did they make up a person? Please say that, Ed. I think they, no fucking way. Tony Adams is a real football player, but the problem is that he started playing football in 2022 at safety for the New York Jets. That doesn't sound to me like somebody who, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a fair assessment. Where? Where did you t- do we- tell me more about Tony Adams? I fucking dare you. <laughs> okay, this is way better than a real answer. I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. There seems to be a mistake regarding Tony Adams. There was no quarterback named Tony Adams who started for the Washington football team during the 1987 season or any other season in the NFL. I regret the error in my previous response. What the fuck? Wow. I right. I have no <laughs> words for what just happened there. With that in mind, can you tell me what the real answer to the question of <laughs> which team fielded the greatest number of starting quarterbacks in a single season. This week on being snarky with AI. What? Oh, my, that's so wrong! Holy shit! 
At least these are all actual NFL quarterbacks. Um, that you that you. I apologize know. for. <laughs> I apologize for the incorrect information provided by previous response. The correct answer to the question of which team fielded the greatest number of starting quarterbacks in a single season is the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns hold the record for the most starting quarterbacks in a single season with nine different quarterbacks starting games in the 2019 NFL season. Huh. I, I would have remembered that. <laughs> I promise. 20... <laughs> Uh, they they started two different quarter one quarterback that year. Holy shit! They started one quarterback that year, Baker Mayfield. Uh, that's in actuality. What they said was Baker Mayfield, Garrett Gilbert, who at least was on the roster and threw passes, Drew Stanton, Tyrod Taylor, David Blau, Jeff Driscoll, Mason Rudolph, who I believe has only been on the Steelers, Devlin Hodges, another Steeler, and Brandon Allen. Can you tell me how many starts for the 2019 Cleveland Browns each of those nine quarterbacks had? What the fuck? Okay, certainly. One, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield started 16 games, which was the majority of the season for the Browns. (sighs) Two, Garrett Gilbert. Garrett Gilbert did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. Three, Drew Stanton. Drew Stanton did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. Four, Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor started one game for the Browns in the 2019 season. By the way, that's false. Five, David Blau. David Blau did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. However, he did start games for the Detroit Lions that season. Six, Jeff Driscoll. Jeff Driscoll did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. However, he did start games for the Detroit Lions that season. Seven, Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. However, he did start games for the Pittsburgh Steelers that season. Eight, Devlin Hodges. Devlin Hodges did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. However, he did start games for the Pittsburgh Steelers that season. Nine, Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen did not start any games for the Browns in the 2019 season. However, he did start games for the Denver Broncos that season. I, <laughs> I good lord. If I'm um, just one more, if that's the case, then wouldn't it be true that the 2019 Cleveland Browns did not start the most quarterbacks in a single season for a single team? You are correct. Okay, and then the number keeps going up, which is the best part, right? So it was seven for Washington. Nine for the Browns, and then they're like, oh, you're right, sorry for the confusion. Actually, it's tied between the 76 Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the 1987 Cleveland Browns, both of which had a total of 10 different starting quarterbacks. How does this number keep going up? I have no idea. Uh, What's crazy is 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is, you know, obviously the first year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers ever fielded a team. It's like the worst team in NFL history. Um, they only played 14 games. So to start 10 would be an impressive feat. They did start three. So, which, you know, that's kind of a lot. Anyway, I think it's probably just that guy um, was right about the 1987 Patriots, along with three other teams, starting five. Yeah, some random guy on Quora who didn't even get the complete answer correct. Uh got it. Ten ten I just looked up the nineteen eighty seven season, so I know the Cleveland Browns didn't start ten. Friends, do you often find yourself needing life saving medications, but your doctors won't prescribe to you what Aaron Rodgers has already researched and determined is safe enough to use? Put the final nail in their woke coffin with Jace Medical. Your Jace case features unlimited physician follow-up for any questions relating to the use of any medication prescribed. An emergency antibiotic guide written by board-certified physicians as a companion to the use of your prescribed antibiotics, and a follow-up with local funeral home directors and their friendly staff. It contains several standard antibiotics, but also includes add-ons for 20 pills and 40 pills of that sweet, sweet ivermectin the libs don't want you to have. Clear yourself out and do your own research with Jace Medical. Yeah, we'll start an OnlyFans just like everybody else. (laughs) 
OnlyFans is like really adamant that like people who are not sex workers join the platform and like make it like a general use platform. Like they really want that. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny. sure that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's the Simpsons line that uh, hillbillies want to be called sons of the soil, but that's that ain't going to happen either. Like, <laughs> all right, let's see. Um, what? Why did you link the lyrics of Creed's "Why"? That was a <laughs> that was a uh, uh, someone screamed that into the void. <laughs> Somebody oh, okay. posted the lyrics yeah. to that. <laughs> my my line will be someone literally sent us the lyrics to a creed song amazing by the way and i'm sure a million you've seen that they are uh, they've scheduled tour dates and everything they are coming back um, for next year's tour right you've seen that what creed what yes are you the only human being on the planet who didn't see this announcement today what that creed was going back on tour yes yeah, I am the only human being. I didn't see that at all. Good Christ, man. Here. Just for somebody. This is like news I'm comfortable not being. No, no. For. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Are <laughs> fuck you. Be like everybody else on Vikings Twitter and open this goddamn link now. Who yeah, the so hell do you, because you think called... you're so much better than the rest of us that, oh, I don't need to know about. No, fuck you. You follow the Vikings. You report on the Vikings. You are going to be you're going to be dealing with the Creed shit now. You're going to be dealing with the Creed. What? That's so stupid. <laughs> okay, you follow the Vikings, you're going to deal with Creed. Wait, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> make, it so through the, make it through the second uh, paragraph. Yeah, I see Switchfoot and, and Doc <laughs> Creed. And... <laughs> tonic? No, wait, is Tonic a Christian yes. band? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Finger 11 isn't, I can tell you that. Yeah, I see Finger 11 too. I'm confident they're not, so I'm not worried about that. <laughs> okay they're not okay thank god jesus well uh, now you're doing a little bit more of the christian thing i just want to point that out twice fuck off <laughs> listen you're dealing with the goddamn creed shit uh look i just look touring, so with, I've switch got foot. A... touring with switch foot <laughs> well i mean has got time now right the so. bits are strong they have two <laughs> dates in minnesota two we are not going. I look. It's a July. What the fuck do you have to do? Uh, literally nothing. I prefer that. <laughs> they are playing the Moon Dance Jam and what? Wait, actually, I might have. Uh, I might have plans that again. Do to do Rock Fest twenty twenty four. God damn it, dude. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm busy. Sorry, that's the last day of the. Uh, of the festival so yeah i'm busy fantastic good news all right <laughs> Look, okay so i've put together it like a um oh you thought you were sad playlist now listen to this and tonic <laughs> features and i just I, I, it would have devastated me to learn that they were a christian band. <laughs> wait wait back up what You've put together a playlist of, oh, so you thought you were sad? Try this? Yeah. Is, is that, that like the... That? Is, is that like... <laughs> the, the scary theater, not quite goth kid? Um, <laughs> is that the scary, like, uh, like kind of goth, but not really kids version of um, now that's what I call music? I mean, I guess, but it, it features primarily 90s songs, right? So, like, like just, like, really stupid stuff, right? Like, um, actually, a lot of Pearl Jam, now that I think about it, because there's, like, a lot of sad shit in Pearl Jam's <laughs> discography. It's actually three versions of, uh, of the song Daughter. It's weird. Um, <laughs> it's Daughter, Jeremy, Last Kiss, and then Daughter again, and then Last Kiss, uh, parentheses, acoustic. <laughs> <laughs> Like his twenty fifth anniversary remix of uh, of Daughter, and then Better Man, and that transitions into half of Vertical Horizons discography. Oh man! <laughs> and not even like the hit single. It's You're a God like three times. That's Tall Bachman Group. That's not Vertical no, Horizons. No, You're a God and I'm Not <laughs> is in fact uh, that's Vertical Horizon. That was the second single. There. Oh no, I'm thinking. Okay, no, you're right. 
She's so What's high the, is tall box. She's so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've placed them next to each other on the playlist. That's why. <laughs> That's why. This. You're a god. She's so high. But yeah, perfect. I, <laughs> but yeah, they are both on the playlist and they are actually next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I told you, like, I, I told you it was a playlist of. Wow. OK, so did you want to be more sad? Here you go. Oh, my God. A little bit of Goo Goo Dolls, a little bit of Gin Blossoms. It's actually uh, just Black Balloon. It's nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Black Balloon. There's no Iris. Iris is not allowed here. Also, oddly enough, Uninvited by Alanis Morissette is in here for some reason. <laughs> uh, very carefully selected Third Eye Blind. Uh, <laughs> the song's not about meth. <laughs> yeah, the songs that are not about meth, which are the happy songs. Um and strangely, not the suicide one. That one actually kind of, that's kind of a bop. So that's gone. <laughs> that, that song gets <laughs> no, like Motorcycle Drive-By okay. and, uh, and Slow Motion, instrumental and lyrical, uh, but not the original lyrics because they're racist and you can't find them on Spotify anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's three versions of Linger by the Cranberries. Oh, I should add that. No, I already have it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ends with beautiful stranger for no good reason <laughs> what was i thinking ending with beautiful <laughs> so where in the playlist is brick by ben folds five i have to ask uh, let me pull it up so i haven't actually finished oh, ordering it's... the playlist okay okay um so all the songs are there but i haven't put them all in order yet but I'm pretty sure Brick is already in the order. Let me pull it up. <laughs> I would have to assume that it's somewhere between Have You Ever Really Loved a Woman by Brian Adams and The Way from uh, from Fastball. So I was I was I was strongly considering keeping or cutting Have You Ever Loved a Woman by Brian Adams, but I just don't have enough nostalgia for that song. So uh, you it. you were you know your your median age during the '90s being seven and all. I could see right. with the, the problem with that. That resonates more with my generation, I suppose. Yeah, so I had to. But th- 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 that was a candidate for sure. <laughs> that was definitely being considered. Holy shit! It is okay. It is <laughs> three songs after Bre- uh, after Better Man and right before <laughs> Motorcycle Drive By. This is like um uh like a two hundred song playlist, and like these songs are all like next to each other. <laughs> Have you ever wished to be involved in something that is legally but not psychologically distinct from gambling? We have great news with today's sponsor, PrizePix. I mean, engage with thousands of other users on what your thoughts are on whether or not Justin Jefferson will earn 77.5 receiving yards in week one. This is daily fantasy, just like constructing a team of players using a salary cap, except instead of that, we pick a number and you pick the over. I mean, you pick whether or not he achieves that goal. Some would call this wagering, gambling. I think what it is is a risk-free investment. If you have a gambling problem, that has nothing to do with us. Prize picks. If you want a minute, you can. I'll give you prep time. <laughs> God, it's been years since I've had prep time. Uh-huh. See? That's probably what uh, what's caused all your problems now is the lack of prep time. Yeah, that would have built me a garage, right? <laughs> Dude, they are so underrated. You never know how great a garage is until you have one. Oh, yeah? Tell me more about that, James. <laughs> well, let me tell you about all the things I can put in a garage. Because because I'm of the opinion that you never know how great you are until you need one. That's uh, kind of where I'm at. Okay. Well, I mean, I can see that. But <laughs> I got to say that you know, putting things in the garage, locking them up at night does provide an odd amount of comfort. To me, I suppose. Even if I don't drive a Hyundai. Do you like all your limbs, James? I am very attached to them, as it turns out. At the moment, yeah. (laughs) Speaking of doing it for the optics, uh, the Brandon Powell Doctrine asks, For a Reef's latter-day quarterback corner, what lessons can Jaron Hall glean from other groups or teams that were forced to switch leaders mid-journey? 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but also the Brandon Powell Doctrine is such an amazing name. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Latter day quarterback corner. Good lord. Um look, you, you try not to switch horses mid war. That's all I know. I mean <laughs> so you, you go where the golden plates tell you to go. That's that's what <laughs> that's what I know in the situation. Especially if you're the only person, uh, and and only I can read the golden plates. Exactly. By the way, especially if you're the only one who can read them. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, also, now that Mike Hangum Pence has dropped out of the race, who will you be supporting in the GOP presidential primary? <laughs> I mean, how many how many GOP candidates have attended an NFL game? Right. So Mike Pence did, so that he could leave. So that he can For the leave. express purpose of leaving, right? Which is, it feels like Ted Cruz has gone to an NFL game, right? Uh, he's gone like to he a went to baseball the game at least. He well, has, I know yeah, that he, for Ted a fact. Ted Cruz NFL, I'm sure. <laughs> at Ted Cruz NFL, um, <laughs> that's that's actually my burner account. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to go with him until we find another GOP candidate with uh, NFL game watching experience. Um. Man, I don't know. I I suppose if the if the NFL does want to, you know, expand back into Mexico, you could use him as a liaison to Cancun or something. Possibly. ZipRecruiter is your all-in-one hiring solution, making it easier than ever to find the perfect candidate for your job openings. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right skills and experience for your job. And the best part. You can post your job to over 100 job sites and elementary schools with just one click, reaching millions of potential candidates. No more sifting through countless crayon-filled resumes or wasting time on applicants that shouldn't have passed preschool. ZipRecruiter does the work for you. Plus, their easy-to-use dashboard lets you review, rate, and manage candidates all in one place, making the hiring process faster and more efficient for your cookie-baking and shipping business. ZipRecruiter is the smart choice for finding your next great hire. And right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash BougieCookie. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash BougieCookie. Don't wait. Give ZipRecruiter a try for all your child labor needs. <laughs> I can't believe I managed that. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I swore you were going to break. I swore you were going to break at the uh, at at the at shouldn't have passed preschool right there. I thought that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried when we got to the elementary school thing. I was like, "What are we doing? What is this now? <laughs> like, what is he gonna? Oh, am I, am I gonna get? Oh, oh God! Thank God! Thank God! It's about the child labor." Yes, thank God it's about the child labor. Look, I just did the ad read for the porn house. I I'm feel like familiar. having the child right. labor read right after that raises some, in the edit. We got to push things around. <laughs> Supply side guy economics, really? <laughs> 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 did you put that in the show notes, Dustin? I sure did. I was like, oh, we got a show title. <laughs> if I were to have the water in my mouth, it would have been spat out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it started out as a very normal discussion about uh, the Russell problem. Wilson's contract. Yeah. And then um, it oh, just... Oh, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was doing research to answer the show notes questions, and I got stuck on the Russell Wilson thing. So uh, Dusty wanted to talk about the Broncos for a bit. As, as well, I mostly I, I wanted to talk about the uh, mismatch between um, guys and uh, getting like you can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, so they, so the Broncos uh, both do not have guys nor the means to acquire guys, and so we ended up talking about the guy economy, of course. Yeah, they, they have a it was a supply problem or demand problem, uh, which of course led to. Someone, I won't say who, saying supply side guy economics. Is this a problem that's easily fixed with milkshakes, or is this something that like gets fixed elsewise? 
It's. Uh, I mean, it's certainly possible. I mean, you if really... it's a guy deficit, I think so. But if it's a getting deficit, I don't think so. Yeah, because it's easier to adjust your uh, quantity supplied of guys. Yeah. Need more milkshakes. Got it. <laughs> or fewer, depending on the number of guys. <laughs> <laughs> this right. is exactly my point. Norse Code is the largest and only division of Norse Code, LLC. You can find Norse Code on the Daily Norseman, SB Nation's Vikings blog at dailynorseman.com. You can also find it on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever fine podcasts are aggregated. Our Vikings blogger extraordinaire and generally useful human is Reef Hassan of... And he can be found on Twitter at Arif Hassan NFL. I am your producer and host, and my name is James Vygoshnik. You can find me at the show's official Twitter feed, at NorseCodeDN, or at my personal account, at Big Mono. If you'd like to donate a few bucks to the show, you can do so in a couple of different ways. You can go to patreon.com slash NorseCode and donate there. For $3.50 a month, you get bonus material and more. You can also go to paypal.me slash NorseCode for a one-time donation, or you can go to NorseCode.threadless.com and pick up some NorseCode merch. Any questions or comments that cannot fit in a tweet can be sent to NorseCodePodcast at gmail.com. On behalf of the Norse Code staff, we thank you so much for listening. Our formula is this. Hey, all things are possible through the power of Ben DiNucci. Hey!